Here on the Colour of Country Life, Flow FM, great to be speaking with the Regional Development Minister, Christy McBain. How are you going, Minister? Uh, Very well, thank you. How are you? Uh, Wonderful, thanks. We were pleased to see uh, your press release regarding the upcoming Jobs and Skills Summit and your focus for regional Australians. Just tell us what you're wanting to take to the summit. Look, it's really important for me, having grown up and and living in a regional area, to make sure that there is a real regional focus as part of the Jobs and Skills Summit. We know that there's been uh, significant staff shortages affecting our communities, whether that's hospitality uh, businesses or waitlist for tradies, delays in planning approvals. We know that we're suffering from a lack of those skilled staff. So we want to make sure that there is a real regional focus. And that's why I've been holding a number of roundtables talking to organisations and stakeholders as part of that uh, information gathering. Now, why are we having a Jobs and Skills Summit in the first place? Why has the Albanese government thought we need to have this sort of summit? I think it's really important to make sure that uh, the workforce Um, and all of those participants, employers, employees, trade unions, government, civil society, are involved in how we uh, develop our economy going forward. Uh, We know we've got low unemployment, but at the same time we uh, have a a skill shortage across the country. Uh, We know that the borders have been closed, but uh, we also know that there are going to be new industries and new technologies that uh, take take hold across this country and we're going to have to skill ourselves up for those new opportunities. I think it's important that we're looking at what the future of uh, training and education is going to be and um, you know we know that the regions have a lot to offer and we should be making sure that our voices are heard as part of any design of uh, our future workforce. Now we know in the regions we've like you say we've got a lot to offer but unfortunately we've often seen what we call the brain drain for generations out of regional Australia. Um, you've taken some inspiration from some young people about how to pick up jobs and skills and stay in the regions. Yeah, that's right. I spoke um, with members of the Rural Ambassadors Program uh, from right across the country and, uh, you know, a group of uh, 16 to 18 year olds who who all had a a series of ideas about how they could uh, train and stay locally. Um, You know, some of the uh, incentives um, that perhaps allows them to do so, some of the disadvantages that come sometimes with living in regional areas um, and the lack of access. Uh, to to skills uh, and and training. So uh, it was fantastic to hear from them and the other side of the coin which we need to make sure we're we're, uh, listening to is young people because uh, this is an economy and a workforce that we need to make sure works for them going forward. You're quite right. My own daughter actually has her first trial shift at a bakery today. (laughs) So the the young people are picking up jobs in regional areas but how do we make sure that uh, I guess we don't have to rely so much on you know, labour from overseas if we've got young people who are otherwise unemployed not that long ago they were. That's right and, and best of luck to her today. Custard tarts are definitely in my favourite list. <laughs> um, but look, at, no, it really is important. I think um, when we look at youth unemployment statistics, um, they are still much higher than the national average. So we really need to make sure that we are focusing on dealing with uh, youth unemployment and youth underemployment, uh, making sure that there are jobs uh, available for our young people in the areas that they live in so that they can build their career and their life in the the towns and areas they grew up in, if that's their wish. Um, And we need to make sure that we are doing that through school, um, putting some more money into vocational training, which uh, would be definitely uh, high on my priority list. Uh, and making sure that we are skilling up people for those new industries that are going to take place in the regions predominantly. Uh, And that's really important that we start that process now. And as your um, regional development minister, we're seeing this tree change and sea change from large metropolitan centres into the regions like your own. Uh, Do we need a a strong level of government investment at all levels as well to make sure that we're uh, following people where their feet are going to regional areas? Yeah, that's right. Um, it's it's always important to make sure that we are planning for people where they live. Um, and I think it's uh, incumbent upon us to make sure that our regions are livable, um, that they provide a range of things um, to them, services and infrastructure included. And I know that there are many listeners who will be um, pointing out the fact that connectivity is still one of the, the biggest barriers Uh, to people learning and to businesses growing in our regions. Well, Christy McBain, thank you so much, Regional Development Minister, for joining us today on Flow. Look forward to talking again soon. My pleasure.